The Artemis mission is set to be NASA's most ambitious lunar exploration since the Apollo era. In collaboration with SpaceX, this mission aims to return humans to the moon and establish a sustainable presence. A key innovation is SpaceX's vertically designed lunar lander, which could redefine how we operate on the lunar surface. But what will it take for Artemis to succeed? What new technologies are being deployed to overcome the challenges of lunar exploration? In this video, we'll explore the groundbreaking innovations and strategies that could make the moon our next frontier. SpaceX's design for the lunar lander stands out for its vertical orientation, a departure from traditional landers used in previous missions. The decision to opt for a vertical design was driven by several key factors. First, the vertical structure is highly efficient in terms of space and fuel usage, which is crucial for long-duration missions where every kilogram of payload must be meticulously calculated. The vertical design allows for a streamlined aerodynamic profile that facilitates both descent and ascent in the Moon's low-gravity environment. This is particularly important given that the Moon has no atmosphere to slow down a descending spacecraft, making controlled landings more challenging. However, this innovative design is not without its challenges. The history of lunar landers, particularly those with vertical configurations, is fraught with difficulties. During the Apollo missions, for instance, the lunar module experienced stability issues due to the uneven and loose regolith lunar soil on the surface. These challenges have persisted into the modern era, with SpaceX's Starship prototypes encountering issues such as crashes and explosions during testing. Despite these setbacks, NASA's confidence in SpaceX remains strong, largely due to the reusable nature of the Starship design. The ability to reuse spacecraft not only promises to reduce costs, but also to increase the frequency and flexibility of missions, potentially revolutionizing space travel. Moreover, the Artemis mission is not just about landing on the moon, it's about doing so sustainably. The development of durable and reusable landing pads is crucial for the long-term success of lunar exploration. These pads must be able to withstand repeated landings and launches without significant degradation. This requires a deep understanding of the lunar environment, particularly the mechanical properties of the regolith, which vary from one location to another. As such, the success of the Artemis mission will depend heavily on the ability to build infrastructure that can support these complex operations. As the Artemis III mission approaches, there is a growing focus on whether the innovations being developed will be sufficient to overcome the challenges of lunar landings. While the mission is currently scheduled for September 2026, there are significant risks that could delay this timeline. Recent assessments suggest that there is a nearly 1 in 3 chance of delay, with some projections pushing the mission back to February 2028. These concerns are primarily related to the technical challenges associated with SpaceX's Starship lander and the complexities of landing on the Moon's unpredictable surface. One of the primary risks associated with vertical landers is their interaction with the lunar regolith. The regolith is a layer of loose, fragmented material covering solid bedrock, and its properties can vary widely across different regions of the Moon. This variability makes landing particularly challenging, as the regolith can be displaced by the lander's rocket plumes, potentially causing craters to form beneath the spacecraft. This can lead to an unstable landing, with the risk that the lander may tilt or even topple over if the surface is not adequately prepared. Additionally, the ejected regolith can become high-speed debris, posing a threat to both the lander and any other equipment in the vicinity. To address these challenges, NASA and SpaceX are implementing several strategies. One critical approach is the development of landing pads designed to withstand the forces generated by rocket plumes. These pads must provide a stable surface for the lander to touch down on, reducing the risk of cratering and minimizing the amount of debris kicked up during landing. However, Constructing such a pad on the Moon presents its own set of challenges. The lunar environment is characterized by extreme temperature fluctuations and a lack of atmosphere, conditions that make traditional construction methods difficult, if not impossible. Advanced simulation tools are also being leveraged to model the interaction between rocket plumes and the lunar surface. These simulations allow engineers to predict potential issues and develop solutions before the actual landing occurs. 
For example, simulations can help determine the best locations for landing pads, taking into account the composition and mechanical properties of the regolith in different areas. They can also guide the design of the lander's engine nozzles and landing gear to minimize the impact of rocket plumes on the surface. Another factor influencing the success of the Artemis III mission is the need for additional testing and refinement of the Starship lander. Space exploration is inherently risky, and even the best laid plans can encounter unforeseen obstacles. Recent reports indicate that SpaceX's Starship lander could face delays due to the need for more rigorous testing, particularly in the harsh lunar environment. NASA is also considering contingency plans, such as alternative mission profiles that could be implemented if the primary plan encounters significant obstacles. Besides NASA's contingency plans, it is essential to explore alternative approaches and technologies that could enhance the safety and success of future lunar missions. One innovative approach involves using a material known as Rhino Snot, a spray-on polymer originally developed for military applications to stabilize dust-prone areas. This material could be adapted for use on the moon, where it would help to stabilize the regolith and prevent it from being displaced during landing. By bonding the loose particles of regolith together, Rhino Snot could create a more cohesive surface that reduces the risk of cratering and debris ejection. This would not only improve the safety of landings, but also extend the lifespan of landing pads by reducing wear and tear. Another potential solution is the use of sintered regolith pads. Sintering involves heating the regolith to the point where its particles fuse together, creating a solid, durable surface. This technique could be used to create landing pads that are capable of withstanding the intense forces exerted by rocket plumes. Sintered regolith pads would offer several advantages, including increased resistance to erosion and the ability to support repeated landings without significant degradation. Moreover, because sintering can be done using local materials, this approach could reduce the need for transporting construction materials from Earth, making it a more sustainable option for long-term lunar exploration. In addition to these material-based solutions, engineers are also exploring alternative lander designs that could mitigate the risks associated with vertical landings. For example, some designs propose landing spacecraft horizontally or using multiple smaller thrusters to distribute the force more evenly across the surface. Horizontal landers could reduce the likelihood of cratering by spreading the landing forces over a larger area, while multiple thrusters could provide greater control during the descent allowing for more precise landings. These design alternatives are still in the early stages of development, but they offer promising avenues for improving the safety and reliability of lunar missions. Furthermore, ongoing research into the lunar surface is yielding new insights that could inform future landing strategies. By studying the properties of the regolith in greater detail, scientists are gaining a better understanding of how it interacts with rocket plumes and other forces. This knowledge is essential for designing landing systems that can adapt to the unique challenges of the lunar environment. Finally, it is crucial to recognize the importance of continued collaboration between NASA, SpaceX, and other industry partners in avoiding future failures. By investing in new technologies, exploring alternative designs, and continuing to learn from past failures, NASA and its partners are paving the way for a new era of lunar exploration. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on the latest in space exploration. And let us know in the comments what you think about the future of lunar landings. Will SpaceX's vertical design be the key to success? Or are there other innovations on the horizon that could change the game?